Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, part of the furniture with me, Daniel. It's season 16, episode 9, and today we're back for what could be the biggest moment of this series. We're just a point away from winning the Premier League title, and today we've got our first of two chances to do so with a home game against Everton. We've also got Tottenham chasing us in second place, and if they drop a point in either game, they'll be out of it as well, and they've got two very tough ones to finish so we've got four chances to win the title in truth so fingers crossed one of those four games will go our way and we'll be able to lift the Premier League crown for the first time at Torquay United but if you have missed any of the episodes so far as we've started on our new schedule at the start of this season please do go back and catch up with it it's been a brilliant year with lots of ups and downs and lots of different competitions featuring we of course started in a Champions League for the first time played in a European Super Cup final, had a community shield and a record transfer too. There really has been plenty going on. But a massive thank you to everyone that continues to support the series. And if you are new to the channel, then please do subscribe for daily FM19 content as well as regular videos from Cricket19. But let's go and have a look at the schedule just to see the few games we've played off camera. And then we're going to turn our focus to the Everton match and hopefully a Premier League title in waiting. So it's not been the most eventful time time really we've done pretty much as you would expect you're with me as we got that crucial nil nil draw at spurs it really was a gritty horrible ugly performance in the last episode but we did the job and i was so proud of the boys and i felt at that moment in truth that it was going to be the defining game and since then we've done just as we wanted to and we've got a new hero on our hands if i take you to the aston villa game you'll see exactly why in a moment look at the goal times there we took the lead with 15 minutes left, Alex Andrade ending another goal drought, and then our former player James Hayes came back to haunt us, a goal 10 minutes from time, despite the fact we'd absolutely dominated for 80 minutes, but it looked like we were going to be pegged back, and then Kyle McDonnell, the man we signed a year and a half ago for £70 million, our only England international in the team, with a 93rd minute header, a bullet from 2 or 3 yards, and that moment has surely also proved to be crucial in the title race as it's been absolutely fantastic after that brilliant draw against Spurs to ensure we kept our distance. Then in the last game at home to Bournemouth, a slightly less worrying affair. We didn't make any changes as the boys were performing well. After Omar's brace early on, we controlled the game pretty beautifully. So at home to Everton today, with just the two normal players out, Everton have three doubtful themselves and they are in 8th place in the league. And remember we just need to get a point to see us over the line and win the title it'll be the fourth of six trophies we desperately wanted to win at the start of this series as we set out in our objectives many many months ago the only two that would then be remaining the european super cup which we played in the final of for the first time this year and the champions league which will of course get a second chance at next season and with a premier league title in the bag we'll be able to focus on it a little bit more but let's go and get into this match today we've obviously got a big money signing coming in the summer and we want him to join with us as champions I'm really hoping we can do it today so tomorrow in the final day of the season we can just have a little bit of a party and celebration I think only in season one we got to have a promotion party where we just got to enjoy the final day having already met our objective so if we could do the same on this occasion in what will be our best chance to win the Premier League title I really will be very happy and probably far more relaxed in the next episode but while we play a home to Everton today Tottenham have got a massive game against Manchester City who for the most part this season look like being our main title rivals until they dramatically fell away over the last 10 games with Massimiliano Allegri in danger I wonder if he's still got a job I'm just going to go and see who the manager is now if he survived he's done very well at the moment he is still in charge so they must be doing well in some competitions they're in the Champions League semi-final although they have just been beaten heavily by PSG and then they're into the FA Cup final two that one against Tottenham our title rivals so let's go and have a look at the match preview we are very heavy favorites today but that means nothing on an occasion like this nerves are going to be at the forefront for these players most of whom have never been in this position before we are in strong form in comparison to Everton who actually have a one in four games and they've lost the last three of those as well so certainly plenty of challenges for them they've got Lopetegui in charge at the moment and they lost their skipper of course 
in January, Stephen Tongu went to Arsenal, a player we saw in an earlier episode this week when he was playing for the Gunners. But let's have a look at our 11 today. No real changes in recent weeks. Kozel's come back in for Buba Carcilla as he's now back to full fitness. And then Richard Quirk and Mon Everson at the back still as the other two lads are out injured. So we've got Stojanovic in goal for this one. Quirk and Moraes are the fullbacks. McDonnell and Mon Everson at centre half with Bakanez in the holding role. Omar and Cater in central midfield. We wouldn't mind another brace from Omar. And then Souza and Kozel on the wings with Andrade up front who's now back to scoring form just one away from from double figures. It is remarkable that bar Omar, none of our players have reached double figures this season. He's only got 12 as well, so the goals have been shared all over the team. No one really standing out. I'm just going to go and talk to a couple of these lads individually, just because they've got slightly low morale. I won't bore you with all of the conversations, but you'll see their reactions in a moment when we come back. Okay then, we've just talked to four of the lads. Moniverson, Moraes, Kozel and Andrade all reacted really well. Omar wasn't one we'd just done. I'm not quite sure why he's happy. A latest chat beforehand. Not quite sure what that one was about, but let's not worry about that now. Let's go and get into this game against Everton. We've got a few things to talk about in there as well, but hopefully we'll be talking about a Premier League title rather than my other changes off the pitch. It's a 4-3-3 for the away side. They've matched us up here. Just the one real player up front in Gebbles. He's a really decent player and at 32 years of age now, he's captain in the side as well. Still rated as an elite striker. Pops up in our scout reports every now and then. But he earns more money than we can afford to pay. And we're not in the business of signing old players. They've got Lemeche in the holding role. One of the most interesting players for us in this series actually. Partly because he came through as a wonder kid at 18 or 19 and popped up in a couple of our scout reports but he had really poor ratings in there he was rated as to only sign as a last resort about two star ability but he clearly had this huge potential and he's become a top level midfielder this is at the sort of time we had the likes of Vladimir in the holding role and he wasn't rated any better you can clearly see he's become a very good player so I'm not quite sure what's gone on with their scouts there you can even see the last summary at the top it just seems like one of the few oversights by them. They've never rated this player, despite the fact he's a very good one. They all talk very highly about the goalkeeper. He's on 200 grand a week, and he is a fantastic pro. He's the man keeping Badger, our former keeper, out the Dutch side. So that's just how good he is. And then we've got our 4-3-3 lined up too. So hopefully our one will come out on top. They've got a replacement at left back for Tong who left in January. And we'll just have to hope that he's slightly weaker. But let's go and talk to the boys and tell them to pick up where they left off. We were really solid against Bournemouth and we'd like to do exactly the same again. And hopefully if they do so, we'll have a great chance, just as Stuart Jellin recommends. He is probably going to be one of the casualties in the summer as we go through one of these regenerations of our staffing group. We had that when we came up to the Premier League a few years back and we also had it in the Football League at one stage when we got particularly stuck in League 1 and 2 just as we were moving through the league slowly. So we do do it every five or six years. It's important that we keep up to the standard we are. We need to keep a bit of continuity when we first come up, but after that we really do need to improve. So one of the things we have done is a massive change in director of football. We've gone for a big money experienced Englishman with a really good personality. So we're going to go and meet him after this game, but hopefully that will be on a positive note. We wanted to get this one out the way first. I was too nervous to wait any longer, and now it's Eckert with Gebbles in the middle as we start to see a couple of slight glitches. Stojanovic makes the save and Richard Quirk clears as Diogo Souza picks it up on the right. It looks like the sun's come out. It's certainly got brighter now whereas we're back immediately for another highlight and again it's Everton piling forward. Something that worries me slightly. Best trying to get it over to the left hand side. Jones picking it up and finding Cesar. Is McCarthy cutting in from the left wing? He finds Jonathan in the middle. Now Eckert who's been booked on the right cutting inside and back out to the wing. We've got Marais closing him down quickly but he doesn't get a challenge in. As Cesar finds Jonathan, they're carving us open here. McCarthy shoots, it's a good save again and we are going to go and make some tactical changes now as we're getting cut to shreds on the counter attack. So Richard Quirk and Marais will drop to support duties and we're also going to lower our tempo slightly. Hopefully that'll allow us to keep the ball a bit better so we don't keep getting caught out like that. 
the less possession we have, the harder it's going to be. And on a day like today, we just can't have that. We've also got to keep an eye on the Spurs score at the bottom. Of course, if they draw, what we do is irrelevant. We need them to drop some points so we don't have to do anything here. I'm sure most of the fans in the stadium will be on their phones, desperately looking to see what the score is. As my race is fouled 25 yards out, we're going to have a chance from a free kick. Here's Andrade with it then, straight into the wall and back out to him on the left. He delivers and it's headed away. Cesar flicks it onto the striker. He hacks it across goal and Souza wings it back. Cater finds Kozel where he's been challenged and Everton managed to get it clear. But it's Moraes on the left hand side again, in towards the box and headed away. It's a little bit glitchy and slower than usual today. I'm not quite sure for the reasoning. It's the same computer at exactly the same time, but things seem to be a little bit slower. Maybe even the computer's nervous for me. Five more minutes to go until the break and at the moment it's still nil-nil which is a perfect score at the end of the day. We'll take another boring game if it means we win the title as a long ball into Omar's headed down but he's straight into the arms of Davids that was probably the wrong way round there. McDonald the centre half with a big cross in and a little central midfielder heading it but it's Cater on the edge of the box with a shot straight into the arms of Davids and he's managed to hold that quite comfortably as it looks like it will be nil-nil at the break. Tottenham are drawing as well surely as they're still six points behind us as Gebbles has a free header six yards out a warning sign before half time but luckily for us it went over the bar and both games are still nil nil at the break that's exactly what we wanted at the start we've still got two chances to win the title today Let's go and talk to the boys then. We do seem to have improved since we made those tactical tweaks. We don't need to be gung-ho today. It's all about getting the result. And as we kick off in the second half and it's back to Mon Everson, hopefully we'll be composed in our performance. It's Souza charging down the right who's challenged and Everton clear it away. But the highlight ends almost immediately as most of the lads have a positive body language. It's Andrade in the middle for us with a free kick, blocked by the wall 30 yards out. His delivery's been really poor today as he puts another one wide at the post. I have no idea what the glitching is here. Maybe it's a combination of the heat and the nerves in the room. So hopefully we'll be able to get over the line and then we'll be able to celebrate and forget about it. Lee Rutherford's coming on for Andrade who keeps putting free kicks into the wall. We can't be having that for the rest of the game so he's going to be replaced. Yeladian's coming on on the right wing. The big man Money signing can make an impact today. Not had the best first season at the club. A bit like back in as a few years back. But if he comes on and sets up or scores the winner, we'll forgive him for absolutely everything. And then we're going to save our last sub for a few more minutes. Just in case we get an injury or red card. We want to have one in the bank with 10 left. So we can time waste a little if needed. You can see at the bottom of the screen it's a disaster in the other game. Spurs take the lead against City. As Omar shoots from miles out, it's comfortably over the bar. But now we know we cannot afford to lose if we concede a goal here the title race goes to the final day 15 minutes remaining can we hang on for the most precious of points we said that the one against Tottenham we'd celebrate is going to be a second draw in a row that we could get into a frenzy about we absolutely love draws at the moment as they seem to be doing so much for us we've got five more minutes remaining and I am going to go and make another change now I have no idea who it's going to be though do we even think about going more defensive We've got Richard Quirk on a 6.3 at right back and I am going to make one of the biggest calls of my career. Zitinio is going to come on, naturally a left back but quite good on the right as well. A natural player with decent footwork and we're going to give him the last few minutes of the game. Can he go to a defensive duty? Yes he can and Bruno Moraes will too. Omar's going to drop to support and we're going to go to a balanced mentality. So who would have thought a home to Everton? We're going to start time wasting in stoppage time as Tom them have doubled their lead against City they're fulfilling their end of the bargain so maybe that point against them will be crucial as we're going to start to time waste we'll be more disciplined as well off the ball hold our shape and slow the pace down the usual routine you can say it along with me now the regulars probably all know it off by heart as we're dropping our line of engagement that's the latest addition over the last year or two as we're going to stop preventing short goalkeeper distribution they can have it wherever they want in their own half as long as they don't score 
score a goal against us. We've got 20 seconds left and I think we're going to do it, you know. Please don't let in a goal now. It would be so cruel if we threw it away at this point as McCarthy comes forward on the left. A brilliant tackle from Bacanez and this is the best 0-0 draw at home we've ever had. What a fantastic result. We don't get to see the trophy lifted today. We'll get to enjoy that in the next episode against Chelsea but it's a shame we couldn't do it in front of our home fans. A really decent display to be honest but it was a bit nervy at the end but we've won the Premier League title and that's all that matters and the lads have been absolutely fantastic all year. Stuart Jellings well within his right to praise them. The lads have gained confidence and hopefully they'll put them on display in the last game. We will give a few of our homegrown players a chance too just because there's nothing riding on it and we can enjoy the fact that we're champions. So let's go and see what the media have said about the game and just enjoy that league table for a few more moments. You've got to say how crucial those two games were we saw before. Firstly the win against Villa in the 93rd minute, Kyle McDonald's goal keeping that lead and then also against Tottenham that 0-0 draw. If we lost that game the gap would just be one now. So plenty of positives across the board. One of our former players Michael Duncan has scored himself a brace for United today but I'm just overwhelmed at winning the title. Four points clear with a game to go and we are Premier League champions. Let's go and have a look at the reaction to it as according to the report absolutely nothing happened in this game and that certainly doesn't bother us at all. It was exactly what the day needed. A succession of fouls for Everton the third game in a row we've had that message so teams must be trying to foul us out but we have lived the dream today we pick up the Premier League title and nothing is going to stop my adulation so let's have a look at the confirmation we'll deal with the press conference in a moment we want to go and see this one today just to see what the questions are like having won the league and Rutherford's back into another goal drought and Bedger's praising us as a talky legend the board are happy what else are they going to be what a fantastic achievement for us and we break the dominance of the big six. Conte was spotted at the Torquay Stadium. Here's the England manager looking at a couple of our players. But there's nothing else for us to worry about today. We're just going to enjoy that lovely big C that sits next to our name on the competition screen. Champions of England and maybe next season champions of Europe as that's the only big one we've got left to chase. But let's go and deal with that press conference. Then we will meet our new director of football. He's going to be very important in the summer as he's got to help equip us for Champions League football and trying to go a bit further this time. It's a wonderful feeling to win the title. I'm very proud of a magnificent achievement. If we're going to compete for trophies, of course we have to work under pressure and I think this squad is capable of going on and doing well. How important was a strong run of form in August in ultimately becoming champions? Absolutely not at all. We were the best team over the course of the season and that's what matters to me. Rochelle Best played very well but it didn't matter in the end as 0-0 was a perfect result for us. It did just enough to see us over the line. So I apologise that you have seen two 0-0 draws in a row on camera but I'm sure you'll forgive me given the reward at the end. We really have dug in and done the job and these lads can be really proud of where they are. Gerben Bakanez as the captain lifts the title for us today and we could not be more pleased at our achievement. I really am enjoying this Torquay United side. It would all be worthwhile if we could win the Champions League too. We've probably got about three more years before FM20 to do so. We obviously didn't manage it in our other series, the head coach, so it would be great if we could get over the line in this one. It would be all the more special to do it with Torquay as well, so fingers crossed we'll be able to achieve that, although it is going to be much more difficult. But finally the little bit of housekeeping, now we've got that brilliant achievement out the way. Let's go and have a look at our new director of football. A big money signing on 19000 a week, replaces a 65 year old Slavisa Jakanovic, obviously the former Fulham manager in real life. He's a three and a half star reputation director of football, Michael Edwards a 54 year old, has spent 18 years at Liverpool and before that has been at Tottenham and Pompey. He's got 17 judging player ability, 18 for judging potential potential. Man management, discipline and determination all brilliant and really good at judging data as well. So he should be a great pivot between the coaching team, the scouting team and the data analyst team. So I really think he is going to fit in well and hopefully take our scout into that next level. So fingers crossed he'll make an impact in the summer and get us in a couple of brilliant players. He is going to be working with me very closely so maybe between us we'll find a couple of good deals. But that's it for this episode. If you have enjoyed 
enjoyed it and you're as excited about being champions as me, please do put a thumbs up on the video. For those of you that have been following all the way, a massive thank you for your support and I really hope it's been worthwhile in the end as we finally become champions of England. Just one more to go in the Champions League and we could be the best side in world football. But an incredible moment in this series, the last two years have been absolutely fantastic. All of our hard work and foundations built at the club have come together and led to some fantastic success. Let me know who the star of the season's been for you. Of course Hull, the new centre-half, had the best average rating, but there have been some absolutely brilliant performers, so I'm interested to know who your favourites at the club are. We all have different players we're attracted to. I know who mine is, but I'll share that later in the summer. For now, just let me know your favourite player. Let me know what you think we need to do in the summer as well. Get Michael Edwards to work early. Which position should he be looking at? Of course, right back's going to be a priority now. Richard Quirk, unhappy and Talisi say with a broken leg we never know if he's going to be able to recover from that there's a couple of areas we've got to work on too obviously Shane Mason Smith is a point of worry but I'm not going to get concerned about that today as he can't take away from our brilliant successes subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from this talkie United story we've got episodes on our new schedule every Sunday to Thursday at half four as we continue to work our way up in the footballing world with just Champions League success to follow. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel over the next few weeks too for reaction to announcements about FM20 and we'll also have some of our plans for the game. We've got loads of different series and ideas in our head so come and join me to find out what they are. There's also three episodes a week from my Cricket 19 career. That's every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday. A massive thank you to everyone that supported that series, as well as the Ashes Test playthrough we did beforehand. There's also weekly content from my Snooker 19 career. That's every Friday at 4.30. We're into the final event of the series now, as we try to win the World Championships and emulate our namesake Ronnie O'Sullivan by winning the biggest trophy in the world. A quick apology as we finish the episode, just for how loud I probably got during the game. I really got excited by winning that title, but of course after so many years and such an investment in the club, it is really important to enjoy the success and the moments like this that the club will remember forever. We'll play Chelsea in the final game in the next episode and I hope you'll come and join me for that one as we have a party of champions and lift the Premier League trophy.